Hi, I'm Katie Hacker, your host. One of the most popular design looks is industrial. It's found in furniture, architecture, and of course, jewelry. Metal is at its best when we incorporate a sense of engineering and factories into our designs. Brenda Schwader is the perfect ambassador for the industrial look. I'm so glad you're here, Brenda. Thanks, Katie. Thanks for having me back. Of course. Thanks for joining us. You have some beautiful ideas. And the first time I met you, I always bring this up, was during a trend presentation. And you talked, one of the things you talked about was using architecture and the city as your inspiration. I love that because it reminds me of how long we've been friends. That's awesome. Yeah, and this time what we're trying to do um, is take this, this tool that we've got for bending wire and give our artisans and our people, you know, our designers, another a bunch of tools, these templates, from which they can have um, components to make a lot of different designs. And um, we've got a number of them worked up here, but we're going to take just one that I call the OG-ish form which is a takeoff on OG, you know, an architectural element. I didn't know that, but yeah. I am so happy to be educated about this. Well, I didn't know it either <laughs> until I looked at the form and said, I better look on Google and see what that looks like. <laughs> Find that out. Yeah, so what happens is that we can make this one form, make it in a number of different uh, metals, um, and right over here you can see that we've, made, we've worked it up in 16 gauge, 18 gauge, and 20 gauge, depending on what you want to do with it, and then, you know, decorate it and embellish it however you want. So you can see there's this OG-ish form that's represented in a whole bunch mm -hmm. of different ways. And in yeah. some places you even disguise the form itself. It just forms the foundation, like with the B. Yes, exactly. And it just kind of gives a different uh, de design element that f falls to the back. Or you can use it as a frame from which to, you know, to bead and, and to stitch into. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with these. All right, well, I'm excited to see how to make it. Yeah, great. So well, uh, you know that I'm the steel queen. Yes. <laughs> Undisputed. Hopefully I'm, I'm nicer than steel, but um, so for this one we're going to take a 10 inch piece of steel wire and I just measure like about four inches here and trap that between my swivel lock first with my hand and then I'm going to further tighten it with this screwdriver. And of course steel being a construction material goes right along with our theme today. Isn't but that great? You could do this with other metals as well, right? Oh, absolutely. The steel is, uh, the jig is, does not discriminate against any type of metal. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm taking that lead here and I'm just going to follow the wire path that is on, uh, on the template. And I'm just winding this right in and around. And up here, Katie, I'm going to form like a double bail around here, around this one, this uh, peg up here. And in order to get everything on the same plane, I'm just going to kind of pinch those together and take up that slack right there. Okay. Then I'm gonna just keep going around. Now, what I wanted to mention is that there's three different versions of doing this. We can go down around here like this one. We can, co we can kind of come down, let's see here, and go around this one like this. Oh, if you wanted to make a link. Right, right. Or have you know a loop at the bottom, another bale. And, or we can just go straight across, and then that kind of helps us with whether we want it to be a focal for a tension bracelet or earrings or a pendant. That gives us some options. Yeah, so you kind of need a little bit of planning before you get started to know which type of component you want to make. Right, right. Or if you're a different kind of maker, you just make a bunch of different things, and then you figure out what you're going to do with them. You know that's exactly how I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do. Just speaking from experience. Mm, right. <laughs> so let's do this one that's kind of almost the hardest one here is we would come down and kind of come back here and come, whoopsie, let's get this. See, this is why this swivel lock is great because you don't have to go all the way back. And then I'm just going to take, this is where a bent nose pliers is really comes in handy, is getting all this again at the same plane. And that's going to help your component keep its shape. Yes, yes. And the of course, the great thing about jigs is that they have this repeatable form. Everything is, is very similar, okay, if not the same. So I'm just kind of winding these back to get this OG-ish form. And it's you can see how much time that took. And we were even you know, right. doing a lot of explaining. We stopped to talk, yeah. Um, and so going back around this guy right here. And again, getting that. It's funny because as we are up here working, we tend to spiral a staircase, that's my term, up the peg, and that distorts it. So you want everything on the same plane. So you keep so, smushing it back together as yeah, you work. Smushing, yes, exactly. That's the technical term. <laughs> I'm going to use that one. <laughs> okay, so, and I'm just, you know, took up that slack here, and we're ready to take it off the jig. So okay. we grab that screwdriver here. We just have to just 
Just loosen it a touch and swivel that away. We're gonna grab our wire lifter and then just start taking this up and off. Cool. Mm -hmm. And the, the uh, littler pegs are the ones that are gonna give us the most of Hara's time. But you can kind of see. It's, yeah, it right? definitely has that same shape. Right. Then we just take our, you wanna use a definitely use a, a heavy duty cutter. And okay. we're just going to cut where that starts to overlap. And thank you for holding the wire piece that you cut <laughs> off because. <laughs> so you like, you enjoy your eyes? I do like to be able to see. <laughs> yes, that is a good, that's a good tip. And I'm just going to move this back here. Don't worry, I'm Don't not going to cut myself. Pull that away. And then we have that. So we'll just take this, Katie, over to um, our bench block here. Mine's all beat up because I only use it for steel. So the silversmiths in the audience are probably going, ah! <laughs> Different strokes, you know? Yes. But I'm getting this all in the same plane. And so that it's nice and flat. Then what I want to do is, what I like to do is this sort of um, overlapping bale right here. And all I do is I'm going to take this 28 pe uh, gauge piece of steel wire and I'm going to kind of make a bobby pin out of it. And first thing I want to do is just give myself an anchoring point. Just really tight around one side. Then I'm going to overlap them and put them together. Well, and it adds a little bit of flair to you, you know, right. rather than using the thick wire to bind it at the top, that would be really hard yes. to do. Yes, yes, and so that's why I'm using the 28 gauge. And of course, you know, if, you, if you're a solderer, I'm a cold connector, and so I like to do things, you know, just without any of that flame at all. So I'm just getting this in here, and um, I go around like two or three times making sure that it's nice and put together. And then I'll go around the other side again, and that just sort of keeps everything in line. Another way to do it is to go all the way around too, if you if you kind of want that oh, yeah. type of effect. Add right? more texture. Right. Is there anything you need to do to the wire before you start working that prepares it for becoming jewelry? Um, you know, it's already um, annealed, and so it's soft enough to work with. Um, okay. And we need that because we're that's how we're working with it on the jig. Um, but the hardening process comes in when we took it to the bench block. Um, with steel, it does, it is dirtier, and so we do need to clean it up, which thank you for prompting that very no problem. good question. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna take a little bit of steel, uh, steel wool. Some people prefer like a, you know, a, a, some sort of a scotch bright pad or uh, some sort of scratchy pad like you would use um, in, uh, in your, uh, doing dishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have a thing about uh, steel. And then just to set this so that the, um, the rust doesn't get to it and the oxidize, you're just gonna seal it with a little bit of an archival wax. Okay. And I just take a little bit on my fingers and take it around. Just a little dab will do ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need much, but no, it really does help. All. And actually, you you really don't want, you can overdo it, so you definitely want to, uh, that'll work against you. And you can just see I'm just taking off the excess there, and you have your form that you can then take and make earrings or, you know, this cute bracelet here, pendants, um, tassels, of course, are still in with a vengeance, and so we've got one just, you definitely. know, sort of doing that. Um, just a myriad of ways that you can use them. I love the examples that you're showing here because it really does give you um, inspiration for how to create pieces that suit your own style. Right, you and know? that's the whole idea is to give artisans and makers those components that they can just take like the, and go off. Like on. these here, I mean, I totally agree that you are giving designers a lot of different options here. Right, exactly, and it really, you know, especially when you're doing a lot of different shows or that type of thing. Sometimes it helps to have that bread and butter piece that you can just take and, and go however, you know, which way you want with it. I love it. Thank yeah. you so much, Brenda. Thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm.